Hello, I'm the Day by Day Pagan and I thought that perhaps I would share with you all um, making an ancestor bottle. Just something to kind of connect with my ancestors to sit in charge and kind of help with that connection because I've just been starting to do some ancestor work. So, we have the bottle here. Um, this is actually the last one I have. I had to scrounge and dump my rosemary into this container instead. Um, I wanted a cork sealed bottle for this though. I have my ancestor candle lit here. It is just a three wick candle from Bath and Body Works that I got on sale because I would have never bought it full price. Um, it is the tea rose um, scented candle. It has three wicks and I like to think of it as the ancestors, myself, and the descendants. And I've used this candle for, oops, for a lot of um, ancestor work in the past while I was doing the Spiral Heart Summer Camp, um, Summer Witch Camp. This was the candle that I used for all those, so it's about half used. And I think what I'll do when it's empty is I will fill it up with more wax and three, can three wicks again, just because I really like that. Um, yes, I'm not a huge fan of scented candles, but this one is nice. I like it. So we have the jar here and we're going to cleanse it briefly using the smoke and the flame. Just imagining that heat go up into the jar bottle, just cleansing it. And now that it's ready to be cleansed, it's been cleansed. I'm going to do the cork too, but carefully so I don't burn it because it is flammable. And I don't burn myself either. So now what we have is this little plate here and it already has one of the ingredients in it because I needed somewhere to put it. So this little tea saucer and what's in it is coffee grounds. Now this doesn't have, I don't think, any traditional association with ancestor work or the dead but it does have specific meaning to me and my family, so that's why I'm including it. I would have liked to have gotten my hands on some whole coffee beans, but I wanted to do this now, didn't have any, so ground coffee will work. The next thing we're going to add are some apple seeds, and I need to pick them out of here. Um, I'm going to do three because three is important to me. Um, as a Norse pagan, the number three and the number nine. And apple seeds are common in death magic, um, especially in Celtic societies, but in different um, cultures around the world. We have rosemary. I'm gonna do a little bit of this. This is again associated with the ancestors and the dead. So it's also a nice kind of protective and cleansing. It's actually my favorite herb to use for cleansing, uh, but I feel like it's a nice way to kind of um, ask for that um, protection from anything really um, with your ancestors. And another nice thing about apples is they are considered um, prosperous and that's something that, you know, your ancestors generally want their bloodline or their descendants to be prosperous. That's something I want for my own descendants as well. We have pine, another item. Oh, these smell so strongly Christmassy. And we have sirens, very, uh, very atmospheric and a gnat for some reason. But these I took off of a Christmas tree my family had years ago. years ago and I've never used them until now. Again associated with the dead. I'll put um, different links down below if I find anything that I think is particularly useful. So you can add your intention as you add each ingredient. I'm sure you've heard people on YouTube say this before but I'm going to do at the end. We have dandelion root which according to the tag I harvested in August of 2018. Pop the cork out. I love dandelion root. It's one of my favorite plant allies. And I just felt like, you know, roots, it's a good um, sort of reference. And I may only be able to get one of those out. 
I need tweezers to get them out a little better. This The opening of this jar is not the best for that. So we're going with one dandelion root. <laughs> oh, there's a piece down here. Excuse me. Two dandelion roots. So there's that. What else do we need? I think the only other thing I wanted to add was rose, which is another thing associated with ancestors and the dead. And since it is the scent of my candle, I thought that would be a nice addition as well. I didn't really plan that, it just occurred to me. And I took, these are white rose petals I got off of a friend's bush um, last summer, not this past summer, but the summer before, I think. So everything's there. I'm going to take a minute to put my intent into these ingredients. There's not a lot, but you don't need a lot, especially if you have a small candle or a small jar. So what I've done here is I have put my intention into these that I want my ancestors to feel the connection through these to be, you know, drawn to these. Kind of like a beacon for them to find me, to um, connect with me, sort of. I'm just kind of mixing them together, continuing to think about that. And this particular bottle is just for my familial ancestors, not necessarily blood related. Um, you know, if I have ancestors that were adopted that I'm not blood related to, but I'm going to sit more comfortably. Um, I want this to be family, not just um, like my queer ancestors or something like that. Um, I would make probably a different bottle for that. Or you can make one that encapsulates both, but I want this to be more for my family line, I guess. That was what I focused on when I chose the ingredients. So I'm just kind of fitting them in there. And this is why I only picked a little bit of each ingredient because I wanted it all to fit. And this is such a small bottle. Just continue to think about your ancestors and what you want this bottle to accomplish. This could also be a good time to bring in um, saying your ancestors' names if you know them, or perhaps chanting um, um, a song or reciting a poem or something from the, the culture that your ancestors are from, or, you know, just speaking to your ancestors. I'm kind of doing that in my mind right now rather than out loud. But yes. You might want a little funnel for this depending on your ingredients and everything, but... I'm going to activate this a second time after I finish putting it together and that'll be when I talk to my ancestors more, but that's, you know, something you can do. So now you're going to seal your intent in by putting on the cork. And I'm going to just hold it and think. And when I have enough wax in my candle, I can dip this in or I can leave it like this. You can decorate it however you like. If there are symbols in your culture that your ancestors would find important, they could be drawn on the bottle, put in, put in the bottle on pieces of paper. You could write their names and put them in. There are so many different things you can do with this. This is just a very simple one for me um, because I want it to be sort of a broad um, connection. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the ancestors on my mother's side of my family, so I wanted it to still be somewhat sort of general and not be overpowered by me listing all of the ancestors on my father's side because I know a lot more about that. So that was, you know, something that I kind of thought about um, when I was getting this ready. This was all very impromptu, but that's definitely something I did consider at least a little. So I am going to blow out my ancestor candle, not right this second, but then I will dip this in the wax and I will simply show you what I've got. Okay, so here we are. The wax in my candle has pretty much melted all the way. I wanted it to get all the way down there just to help with tunneling and stuff. Um, I did take some time and 
focus on this, but it also took a while for the smelt, so I got kind of distracted and was on Instagram and whatnot, but you know, so it goes. So I'm gonna blow out the candle. All that smoke. Now I'm gonna take this, dip it in the wax as far down as I can get it, let it cool for a minute, do it again, let it cool for a minute, do it again, let it cool for a minute. I'm just gonna keep doing this to pick up, you know, a nice like layer slash seal of wax. Okay, so here's the bottle all waxed up now. Um, I ended up having to take a little spoon and kind of pour the wax, scoop it up out of the candle and dump it on top um, to get it to sit on top. And I accidentally went a little overboard so we got all the nice drippy drips. Um, I made sure there was no wax really down at the bottom. I broke off any little bits that were at the bottom um, because I don't want it staining the wood where I have my ancestor altar set up. So that's everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this. I know it's kind of cliche. I feel like um, a lot of people have done these, but I thought I'd share how I did mine. And yes, let me know if you try something out like this. I'd love to see. Um, you can follow me here or on Instagram at the Day by Day Pagan. Um, I think that's what my TikTok's called. I'm not sure, but you can follow me there if you want. Um, yeah. So that's that's that. Thank you for watching. Bye.